Year 9, 10 and 11, welcome to an exemplar response on poverty in a Christmas carol. I've already uploaded a full mark response and was asked if I could um, upload an answer that didn't receive full marks but was still solid. So this answer here would have got um, in, in the bracket of 21 to 23 marks um, out of 30, so it is a solid response. And we've got this. The allegorical novella A Christmas Carol was wrote as a political diatribe to critique the Victorian society. Throughout the novella, Dickens mocks the poor law and shows his distaste based of his own experiences. He highlights the wealthy upper class and their fault towards the lower through Scrooge. By Scrooge changing his ways and helping the Cratchits, the representations of those in poverty, it implies that the rich can improve the living standard of the poor and save humanity from destruction. Also, Dickens uses the two children, ignorance and want, as representatives of mankind's fatal flaws. We are first introduced to ignorance and want by them moving out from the foldings of its robe. This symbolises that those who are less fortunate and experience horrific things are hidden and shooed away from society. This implies that those who are deprived are shunned and left to survive by themselves without a helping hand. Also, this refers back to Dickens' message that there was better of, better of need to begin to understand the severity of the situation and change their ways. To accept the lower class into society instead of locking them away in union workhouses or prison. This links to Scrooge's words at the beginning of the novella that the ghost of Christmas present repeats. However, the repetition of the words, are there no prisons, are there no workhouses, seems harsher to the reader in this instance. It is a sharp understanding that the ghost repeats this, so that the target audience, the upper class of the Victorian society, begin to realise the brutality of their actions against the poor and start to feel guilty for how they have treated those in need of help. Also, Dickens describes ignorance and want using the adject of wolfish. The use of anthropomorphism implies the disgusting appearance of the children, which in turn symbolises the ugly appearance of the poor due to the conditions they face on a daily basis. However, the use of, of the wolf refers to how these two children are supposed to be teachers, as wolves are seen as teachers with a lesson that is difficult to accept in Europe. This infers that although the lesson Dickens is teaching is difficult, it is needed and valuable for the Victorian society so that it gives the poor the ability to thrive and experience equality throughout the classes. As well as this, lighthouse keepers are described as solitary Literally, this means that they are alone with no one around them. Metaphorically, it is the poor left to cope and survive through their hardships without help from those who have the ability to give. It also implies that the poor are isolated from society and are made to feel like abnormalities, though they are still human. Furthermore, Scrooge is described using the same adjective. This infers that without equality and one another, nothing actually matters and that they are still alone. This may metaphorically represent that both upper class and lower classes are lacking in something due to not being there to help each other. Another way Dickens prevent, presents po poverty is through the physical appearance of the miners damaged and scarred. Both of these adjectives link to the physical conditions they experience from their workplace. Their work is destroying them physically due to how terrible and horrible the conditions they work in each day. However, they are also being destroyed by the upper classes who use them selfishly and benefit from their vulnerable states. Metaphorically, Scrooge has led to the downfall of the miner's life and will do so to the rest of humanity. Symbolically, it is the upper classes leading the Victorian society into, into destruction if they don't change their ways. Throughout the novella, Dickens uses the lexical field of entrapment, cell, prisoner and narrow when describing either the living place of the poor or simply describing those in poverty. This highlights that the poor are getting held back from flourishing in a brilliant time period by the upper classes. They are not only holding the poor back, but also the rest of society from growing and benefiting from equality and sharing things with one another. It infers that the poor are only in this situation due to the way the upper classes treat them. So you can see obviously why um, it was in that bracket, if you like, um, and if you compare that to the full mark answer, you can see expression slightly diff uh, slightly different. But again, this was, you know, exam, exam conditions, a pretty solid answer there. Again, have a look at 
how the student looks at individual words and takes them metaphorically and symbolically and also linking back to Dickens's life. So I hope this has helped for those who wanted a video that was hitting this type of grid. Um, please check out my YouTube channel for any other videos and massive good luck in your English literature exam.